Hey everybody and welcome to Outdoor Asylum. I've got with me David St. John and I have Dusty McDaniel today. Uh, doesn't look like it, but their pronouns are he and his for the most part, I think. Don't look like it. Don't Who's the he? Them. Who's the well, his? I've had, some que- I've had questions about it. That's oh, I'm you've to, had, I you may have had questions, but I haven't had any I'm questions. Any questions. <laughs> well, they didn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading the comments. Uh-huh. No, you guys, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. It's been a little while since we've done one. Um, just going to talk about a variety of things today. Now, we had dove season here not too long ago. We had the teal season. So, how'd that, David, how'd that go for you? Did you get out there? No, sir. No been, I hadn't pulled the trigger yet. You hadn't. hadn't even I, been in the field. I hadn't either. I've been here most of yeah. time. I've been pushing buttons and pushing these CNC buttons, trying to get some of these spec I've been calls shipping ready. a bunch of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> The only one of us that can that has any life anymore is Dusty. What tell me about it, Dusty? You know you had you, know, you went dove hunting. You got into some Canada too. Yeah, we you? uh we had a pretty good little dove shoot at some uh, family and then family friends place. We killed like 109 the first day, like a 140 something the second day. And the second day we had geese come in three or four times. And ended up with like 10 or 12 of them between all of us. Mm-hmm. And uh. I got the one that had a little jewelry hanging on the leg. That's right. I saw that picture. So, I mean, it can be a local banded goose all at once. It's still what fun. What did the when band say? On who who banded it? Did you, what did, what it did was it bird say? band. It was it, it was, was like Avis. Yeah, yeah, it was no, it was normal bird band report. You know, from didn't the, have a guy's name on it. No, from Arkansas. <laughs> they um. So I know Hollow Bend, Y Mountain Game and Fish does it out of there on the river, Arkansas River. And I know they do the local lake birds at Greer's Ferry. And there's some other lakes, core lakes like that. The Game of Fish goes out and the feds go out and do local banding on them. And this was a local bird where we killed it. So, mm-hmm. But like I said, it's still cool when you grab them. Yeah. First, first two geese of the season, first two, you know, not dove you pick up and one of them's got a big old leg bender. You're like, this is how we start. Have, <laughs> you, ever killed, have you ever killed a dove with a band on them? I mean, I've seen pictures of those. It's one. A bit one. I've killed one down by Arkansas River, and it, again, was banded at Wild Mountain. And so Jake, who's normally producing them, um, see, they banded close to at a Game of Fish property close to his family's property, and they killed a double banded dove this year. And really? it just happened to be banded right there last <laughs> year. So proof in banding, they come right back to where they get banded most times. Do so, they ban those, like, up north at all? I mean, Ethan, I don't, on the migration, how I know, are they normally done? I know for years in this area – Somewhere around Shreveport Red River, that cross lake down there had a huge banding deal. Because guys down there that hunted down there would kill. I mean, they had jars of them, and they were banded right there. Hmm. And so, but I think that's more of a southern thing. Do they even have a dove season in Michigan yet? You know, years ago when we were up there for calling contests. I don't think they do. It was outlawed in Michigan. I don't think they do. A lot of states up north don't. I mean, you'd walk outside in the parking lot. In the hotel, and there'd be 50 dove in the parking lot. Yeah. And whoever was from up there, one, it was one on our trip up there, told me they, they didn't have a it. season because that's what I think that's where they actually a hand, roost and hatch. And, and see, that's the thing. Like, you got to remember, like, a dove's <clears> not going as far north as a duck or a goose. So, not too much further north in Arkansas, you get into their breeding nesting ground yeah. where it should be illegal to hunt them, you know, to an extent. And so. Yeah. Like, you got to protect it. So, like, yeah, I mean, you look in the hottest part of summertime in August, you start seeing them here in Arkansas coming down. So, like, that tells you right there they're not too far above us. You don't hear a lot of people in Missouri just big dove hunting. It's a lot right. of south stuff, a lot of heat mm-hmm. in Texas here, stuff like that. So, I mean, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But they wouldn't go that far. You ever been north. to Argentina? No. You've done that big that's, dove hunt? That's a bucket list. Yeah. That's, Duck and I've, dove. I've seen videos of. Some friends of mine that went over yeah, there. You're melting barrels. You're like, like literally, you have a guy that his whole job is to literally just load your second shotgun while you empty the first one, and exactly. he's handed it to you as fast as you can. I've literally had friends go do it and come back, and their shoulders be black and blue. Yes, yeah. literally. And one of the guys went with my brother-in-law uh, over there, and they had told him not to take a 12 gauge. He said 20 gauge is all <laughs> you're going to need. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he took a 12. And by the first day, his shirt yeah. was saturated in blood because he busted all his blood vessels. Yeah, good shoulder. grief. Like, you're literally <laughs> shooting cases of shells in a hunt. They have one, like a uh, – they have actually uh, – however many birds you kill, like a 
2,500 member group, uh, 5,000 to 7,500. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you hit these numbers and you get put on the wall or whatever, or whatever yeah. it is they do. They got doves like we got mosquitoes on Black Swamp. <laughs> like, literally, that's, that's what it looks like when you see those videos. Who is it? Not plugging anybody, but one of the most famous, David Davies or whatever, one of the most famous outfitters in Argentina. Yeah. If you go Google the, some of their stuff, you literally think, well, this is like me in the swamp in the summertime with mosquitoes. Like, they blot out the sunlight. It's unreal. And the duck hunting is kind of so the same way. There. I wonder um, why, how that happens. Like, just so many. And then they kill so many, but the next year, right back again. Pressure. Right back again. Pressure. So, you think, I mean, the equator's a divider. So, you know, Argentina's further down South America. So, it's, it's just flip, where they go up to Canada and back down to us. You know, they're going down toward Antarctica, more south, and coming back north. But they don't have near the hunting pressure. They don't have near the people hunting. It's all private stuff down there. I mean, a lot of those places, there is no public lands and stuff like that. They hunt a lot so, of pasture ground, if I'm not mistaken, like with horses on it. Yeah. Stuff like that. And they, they hunt ponds. <clears throat> yeah. The and, only water. Yeah, exactly. The only water. But they, the dove that they do not pick up, however many it is, and there's a bunch that they can't find. They say the horses will eat them. Mm-hmm. I, I, when I heard that, I went, what? Horse will eat a dove? That's what they say. They, they, they claim that stuff, they're, they're – <clears throat> Livestock will eat what oh, they don't I find. I want to ride that horse. <laughs> Once out there eating flesh. Now you know where Pegasus time. comes from. Yeah. <laughs> it's got wings. Growing wings. <laughs> but, you, I mean, you know, and you look at, that's a great contrast to just what duck hunting we know. You look at the Midwest where you've got one pond in the middle of a cattle field. Ducks are going to come to it at some point during the day. They're coming to water at some point from a dry feed. And so, much like the Texas dove hunting and all that, where they sit on a pond, that's the same way down there. Yeah. But the duck hunting's the same way. I mean, it's it's stupid. There's no pressure. The ducks don't know what a call is or a decoy. They it's no pressure. Yeah, that's we should go ahead and let's book that trip. Let's go ahead and yeah. start picking some dates and look at a seventeen hour flight or something. Yeah, like it's yeah, you <laughs> multiple flights. <laughs> Nothing you gotta get down there, then you're talking Four to five grand just in outfitter fees right. and all that. Not counting the shells and yeah, you're paying shells. Not counting the guys who pull you over when you're trying to head to the camp. And <laughs> we, we won't save money though. I mean, the southern border's wide open. We can just kind of walk back, sneak back, see if uh, it's a long walk. It's see a if, long uh, walk. There's some dangerous country. <laughs> Abbott, Abbott will bust us back here. To get, you know, so uh, it'll, we, we can save a little money. We can make a reservation ahead of time, maybe. <laughs> What's Arkansas going to be like? Now, we've talked about the dates Arkansas starting, and I've lost track. What, when, well, they, what are we doing? They proposed last year and to move it to the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And around the f- – That's one week back then yes. from what we normally have. And the, around the February, March, whatever the meeting is around that time, I think it's March when they have that, they accepted that. And then the final meeting with everything to be posted in August, they moved it back to normal second Saturday or the day after. Deer season's the second Saturday, I guess, so it's the right. third Saturday, week before Thanksgiving. Why? Who knows? Whatever. You know, I still think with – I mean, you understand the point of a private club that's flooded and prepares and Thanksgiving break, and I get that. But from a public standpoint of delayed flooding – They've totally realigned their water flooding management plan to be later, not October 15th. Now it's like November 15th. Like, to me, you ought to start it later. You know, but. But as of right now, it's. As of right now, it's like it always, it's like it has been since. Saturday before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. What was that, 95, 96, Mm -hmm. when they took it away from Thanksgiving and moved it up a week? It's still the same. It is one week after deer season, which. I guess that's another public land thing is you're talking about the biggest block of public land in the state, the Cache River Refuge, is closed, deer hunting. So don't go duck hunting on the Cache River Refuge opening week in a duck season because you'll get a ticket because it's deer season. you got to have a permit, deer permit to be out there. So If you hunt on, especially you're, you're a public land hunter in Arkansas, the biggest tip we could give you for this season would be to read the guidebook, right? Because some yeah, things yeah. have changed. Like you were talking about the different, different times that you can hunt, or there's some refuges that were – some WMAs that were changing the dates that you could hunt during the week. Or. Yeah, they – so they – you know, in your prep for season, everybody thinks about getting your boat ready, going and shooting some ski, getting this, check your waders for leaks. Well, this year you probably ought to read the reg book because 
there was a handful of WMAs like Raft Creek, you know, ones that was like you can only hunt Tuesdays and Thursdays, Saturday and Sunday. Well, they've added four or five to that list. And I most of them are on the western side of the state, but they've added a handful of stuff to that. And so um, – and then another new one was the whole – which was a big issue three or four years ago about the exhaust on mud motors and exhaust on certain motors and all that. Well, now – I believe it's in the book. I believe, check it, where it says it's supposed to be stock exhaust now, no modified. You know, of course, there was that whole argument and all that about, well, a modified one's actually quieter on some motors than others, blah, blah, blah. But regardless, there is a lot of new things in there. It wouldn't hurt to go refresh your memory because stuff has changed. <laughs> you, show up, so, you show up at the boat ramp and there's nobody else there. You better get the book out. Yeah, you know? like <laughs> yeah, this isn't all right. We got it to our sales today. Is did we miss something? <laughs> yeah, you might have this year because they've changed a lot of stuff. And <clears throat> you don't want to see you don't want to see your public land restricted. Like, don't tell me when I can and can hunt. Yeah, but with the availability of habitat, with flooding, with a dry year like this year, it's not a bad thing. You look at the WMAs that have done that some, they've actually some success on it with having a break day in there, two days or whatever it is. So, At the end of the season last year, did you have anything that was on the list like for next season, I got to get this taken care of or I'm going to do this a little different? Did you have anything from last year that sticks out in your mind? I think for me, while you're thinking, I had to, you know, I, I wanted to try the novelty of the side-by-side shotgun. <laughs> Dusty laughs at me because I had to try it last year. But that thing peels the hide off of my trigger finger, and I have still not gotten that to a gunsmith. So I'm trying to figure out what I've got to do to prevent this. Do thing the same thing that finger. everybody had to do with Benelli's for all them years is get you some old black athletic tape from Walmart or wherever and start wrapping the trigger guard so it doesn't bust your knuckles wide open every time you shoot it. Wrapping the trigger guard. Yeah. Wherever it's coming back at you, you just wrap that in that. Bag. You can actually buy one of them thumb pads. Yeah. I think it's the I think it's the angle of the trigger has a point down on it. And I think somehow as I'm squeezing that trigger, I don't know if it's coming back and as it comes back forward, it's catching my finger. Well, I you don't ought to know. be able to take the guard off and wrap the triggers then. Is it this double trigger? <laughs> so the, the reason I'm laughing at this, so there's context, <laughs> is the first morning Brad took this, we all agreed we had a camera there. Brad's, you know, got his old fancy hammer double barrel. Brad's going to shoot first. Not call the shot. No, when, I didn't. When, I, 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 I didn't. I didn't tell everybody <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I had to hold the shot. <laughs> when, uh, uh, when Brad, let Brad get a line up and shoot his double barrel first, then we'll all shoot in. And it wasn't a group of four or five that come in first. It was a group of about 30 or 40 that come in, and it's swimming in the decoys. Mm. And all you see is Brad over there. Like, <laughs> jumping the gun, and we're like, shoot, shoot. Nobody shot. Finally, Brad was like, I'm pulling the triggers. And it also had hammers and a safety, and Brad did not take the safety off. I got so. the gun. I got the gun. Thank you for sharing that, by yeah. the way. Uh, I got the gun. <laughs> I got the gun the day before. I walk out here. I put two shells through it, fire each barrel off. And that was the limit of my, that was the extent of my testing before the hunt the next morning. And so I'm out there, and to me, you pull a hammer, it's ready to shoot, you know. Yeah. Because this is all, tra- it's, it's really cool because this gun has the traditional, it's got it's got some of the old school stuff and some of the modern technology. It's got, you know, you, you, you've got variable chokes, you know, you screw in chokes. It's got a rib barrel. It's got, you know, some of the, you know, it's a three inch, you know, host three inch ammunition. It's so it's got some of the modern stuff, but it's got the old school stuff. So, so to me, when you pull a hammer, it's time you squeeze the trigger, you're fixing it. Right, shoot exactly. So I'm sitting, yeah, I'm sitting here with the hammers back and I'm sitting there twitching like I'm having a seizure. Oh, twitching, to- twitching is an understatement. <laughs> we, we were laughing at you. He's trying to throw the gun. Yeah, like go, go. Yeah, it wasn't going. Yeah, it was a it was a bad time, and uh, Jake, you know, I told him I'd put that out there, but I think the video oh, it circulated got it, it got good. circulated. Yeah, the moral of the lesson here, kids: <laughs> know your gun before you take it out and use it. And going back to the beginning, this is why you stay in the call shop half the time. You know, this is what happens when you don't hunt enough to stay up with. Well, your stuff. you know, if you would, you didn't shoot though. Okay, when you saw me over there twitching, knew I was in trouble. Instead of laughing at me, <laughs> you, you could have killed something. Yeah, you could have killed. I mean, I had three or four lined up, 
Yeah. We yeah, all were yeah. sitting there like, oh, man, they were just lined up swimming right uh-huh, there in the decoys, yeah. all pretty. and Water yeah. swatting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had four lined up like I'm done in one shot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's easy, easy oh. to blame me. Did you even like carry that, that again after that day? I did. And every time I took it, did, my, did I have the blood on my hand that first day? Yeah, you did. Because I remember the end of that hunt, you kept talking about that, and I think I shot it. I don't. Th- I think I just shot it before we left. We were out there. I don't think I shot any ducks at it, but I shot it, and I, f- I don't remember what it was, but I felt what you were talking about. I think it was because it's a two trigger. When you came back, it was throwing it in between the other two trigger. You were getting well, caught. The first time I did it, I didn't. I didn't realize I'd done it. Like I looked down, and there's, I see blood like trickled around the water. Only I don't. I'm not holding a dead duck, and I'm like, what in the world? And I look, and it's on my hand. And then I think the next time I took it out put like a big blood blister exactly where that was it just didn't actually well, cut the skin that time to to make it go but the thing is i couldn't figure out exactly what's doing because you know when you're shooting at a duck you're concentrating you know you're excited yeah, you're, not you're paying getting attention. up and you're focusing on your shot and you're doing that and then you see the aftermath you don't feel so I don't, anything yeah, i don't feel it at the time and yeah. well, well and that's why i mean most people that shoot the two pews you know two barrels you get an over and under is most time one trigger with a yeah, selector and you right. get most people go bottom barrel first top barrel second and so but most it is very rare to find a side by side that has one trigger there's only a handful of people that make them and lots of time they're more high end and so and to be the hammered one it's going to have two triggers because that is technically your selector and so that's i mean you would want a single trigger if you ever go buy one to avoid stuff like this yeah but you're not going to find one in the side by side very often. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get it to a. I got to get to a gunsmith or something. I know I need a butt pad anyway because it's too small for me. It's a Turkish gun, you know, and I guess I'm bigger than the average Turkish <laughs> citizen. <laughs> so I've got to get that adjusted, the length, and then uh, I'll talk to him about that and see if there's anything that we can do. I guess I'll have to shoot it until my finger bleeds again. We'll figure <laughs> out what's happening to it. But, you but that's it. on my list is something to get done before the season. And here it is September. I haven't done it yet. But. I, the only thing I can think of, I've shot a 12-gauge just about my whole life. I This year, after last year, I had planned on getting a 20-gauge. Mm-hmm. This year, just start using a 20-gauge this year. A lot of people switch to 20. Yep. I don't, That's kind of my, my idea of going into this year. And I'm I like, went, you hear it is September, and I don't have one yet. <laughs> I went past 20. I shoot a 28-gauge a bunch, and I love it. Why? Why? What, what's the advantage? It, it, there's not an advantage. It's just, I've just had a fascination with sub gauge. So, like, I shot a 16 on and off, and I shot a 20 on and off. And the whole 28 thing, you know, my wife is left handed and I have a daughter. Instead of a 410, I had a 28 gauge already, and they shot it some. And so, it's like, if I buy a full size 28, then I have the compact youth one for her, it's got all the same shells. Um, and with the technology of shells, but. The advantage to me, truly duck hunting, especially in the timber, is the recoil of a 12, even a 20, to get back on your second and third shot after you shot one time is non-existent in the 28 gauge. There is, it's like shooting a Red Rider BB gun at ducks, like as far as recoil goes. There is none. And if you're so you're talking about to reacquire your target, yeah, there is you you stay like so you stay on target, you stay on you can, target, easy switch right after the shot and go to another. Not one. to mention, I have been hunting with people and been on the side of the hole and shot one time and killed a duck, and they literally like, did you just shoot? Like they're quiet. The muzzle velocity is the same, but the amount of you know you get into pressure of the shell and all that's like it's quiet. And so, if you're talking about hunting public land, it's light. It weighs nothing. You got long walks. Like, I mean, a 28 is right. A 28 gauge shell is basically a smaller 20 gauge or a little bit bigger 410. It's in the middle. That's where it's at. And so, it's it's unreal. But modern shell technology. That sounds like a sissy gun to me. You can call it sissy gun all you want. <laughs> you it's made fun, fun of my side by side. It's the thirty it's inch fun. barrel. That's a man's gun. You out there? I mean, that should have Red Rider written on the stock. What you talking? I'm gonna about? put Red Rider on it this year, just for you. <laughs> Red Riding Hood. Yeah. <laughs> How hard is it to find ammo for? It's a not really? because mainly because of trap shooting in schools. Twenty eight gauge is always a huge trap gun, so finding shells for it is not. Um, they're everywhere. I find it even, I, even the steel even shot. Even steel shot. Really? I can find twenty eight gauge more than I can find four ten. 
I, I bet you can find it more than you can 20 gauge too. Yeah. I imagine. And what's funny is turkey hunters. So the TSS world with 28 yeah. gauge is unreal. Yeah. And the TSS 410, I've seen us sh- yeah. them shoot that, man. And it's at, at a duck on yeah. the water that's wounded and it's unreal. So I've shot some, um, I shot, I've shot some bismuth for the 28 gauge and I've shot some just regular two and three quarter number six steel shot, you know, um, Heavy metal makes a heavy 12, which is tungsten loads. Right. And you can buy them in fours or sixes, and them are some killing machine. I mean, fold ducks as far out as you could. I mean, it's unreal. So you shell say, technology allows for that, hmm, too. Did you say bismuth? bismuth? I thought it was bismuth. 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 Yeah, bismuth. Said bismuth. bismuth. He was trying to say dismuke. <laughs> bismuke. What so like I've heard a lot it's of people talking about Bismarck. That. Bismarck. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a lot of people talking about the shot, like the the what is the the shells, and and I'm still shooting just basic, you know, steel shot for the most part. Um, what you know, the where they're putting like the small BBs in, like the the little bitty shot mixed in with the bigger shot, the hybrid loads, the hybrid loads. That's become a big thing. Kind of like, I think they call it the blend, the, the blended load. Blended, yeah, blended, blended load. You got you shot any stuff? I've shot some like of that. I've shot some of it. I hear it's deadly, it's, but I've not, good. I've not used it I think myself. It, I think it just, if you shoot, it's funny. We all take our deer rifles to go shoot them on paper and line them up, but nobody ever shoots their shotgun on paper to see what happens. And you'll be right. amazed certain aftermarket chokes shoot better with certain shell combinations, stuff like that. But when you shoot a blended load, like a um, Migra, Browning Wicked Wing, there's another, somebody else makes one. I think Heavy Metal makes one. Apex. Apex makes one. Yeah. And it's like it'll be real small shot, like fives and sixes mixed yeah. with twos. Or right. it's twos and fours or threes and fives. I right. think it's like what Boss does with theirs. Yeah. So if you think about your pattern going out and you have all number threes going out, it's the same distance most of the time from pellet to pellet in your cluster. Well, imagine you have that cluster and then mixed in all that open area inside is these smaller punch holes. So the blended load gives you that more coverage area because they get more pellets in there, especially if you're shooting different, you know, material of metal. Like mm-hmm. if you're shooting tungsten or bismuth, as y'all call it, <laughs> Biz- you know, bismuth. or whatever. <laughs> so, like, if you think about it that way, that especially, that's so important to TSS. It's such a heavy, denser material that hits harder. You shoot nines, so you get more pattern because right. the smaller pellet does the same damage as a big lead one or you know steel one or something like that. So I'd like to try some of that. I'll that that blend, that blend, the blended, I, the, the blended. It, it, I, the one I had was from Apex. It does good. Yeah, man, it was good. Yeah, well, I'd like to try some of that. Of course, you get into some of these shells, man. It's so expensive. You know, yeah. it's like. You know, I've got enough pressure on me anyway. If I miss Dusty's over there, I'm getting recorded by Jake, and Dusty's <laughs> over here laughing and getting this is going to be a fun you know? year. So <laughs> I get enough pressure on it's me without, without having a high, high ammo expense. Well, and it's not a lot of that stuff too. And a lot of that goes back to again, you know what you shoot, you shoot true. You can kill ducks with any shell. Don't get me wrong, but there is something to be said for like, you know cripple shots and just open shots and the distance shots and sometimes you can't always get right up on the hole where you can hide and so like the technology in shell i think has changed a lot of the way people duck hunt too you know used to if you want to sh- used to everybody in the field shot number twos and everybody in the woods shot threes or fours or back in the lead days number sixes even you yeah. know low brass two three quarter number six or high That's brass right. number six stuff like that you went to the bigger <clears> shot <throat> sizes so you had a bigger surface area hitting your target well, with technology and shell, the density of all that, you start to see it come back down. And so, you know, what zinc plated was, zinc plated steel was or the copper first plated. one, copper plated, you know, and all that. So, you know, isn't it a shame that this younger generation just didn't get to see the effects of a lead shot? Oh, gosh. <laughs> At 60, 70, 80 yards. I can, just... <laughs> I can remember the, f- the first time I remember being, wow, and lead may or may not have already been outlawed, was <laughs> shooting. <laughs> Two and three quarter high brass number six Remington Nitro leads out of a Browning A5 with a full choke 30 inch barrel. And I would literally find a rest and shoot wood ducks on a creek 60, 70 yards away and just head roll them. Yep. I mean, like, it was like turkey hunting, is how you could kill ducks. It was unreal. And there wasn't no flopping, they were dead. They were dead. 
And that's the density of lead, it, the penetration of it, the holding it speed as it flies, stuff like that. Now, precision of your shot still is better than lead. Steel can be so much more precisely cut and manufactured, you actually will pattern better with steel most of the time as far as pellet count in a circle than you will with lead. And lead deforms in the shot yep. itself during the It compresses, the yeah. yeah. And that, that's where you would get your flyers and all that and the joke about, you shot my decoy, not the duck. Well, one, it was on top of the decoy, <laughs> but two, it's kind of like blindside somebody out here used to shoot and would kill my decoys every now and then. You know, the square pellets, when they come out, remember Brad tried some of that and started losing decoys instead of ducks, and it was kind of like, eh. I get blamed. Oh, what are you talking about, blame? What, did you dig this pellet out of your decoy? And I decided did. it was me. There was I a got... square hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> it was easy to tell who shot it. There was a square a decoy, hole in it. You got a decoy it. shot. I know who shot it. Shooting I, Rubik's Keys. I, I've got, I know who the culprit was on that. I'm not going to name him. I'm going to call him out here, but I know who the culprit. I know who the decoy shooter of <laughs> but. But that it is kind of funny, like you talk about, like every year the new stuff that comes out, there's always technology driving stuff. And so, like, that's always kind of the fun part of Neil hunting season coming back around is what's new. What is the new thing? There's not a lot of crazy stuff this year, but between the chokes, the aftermarket chokes and shell combos and then what's going on with Game of Fish rigs and this and that, you better check all your stuff and get get prepared Maybe what we need to do is um, on the next one because I don't pattern my gun. I'll be I'll be the first one to admit. Maybe we need to all bring our guns up here for one of our podcasts and like prior to we'll go outside and shoot a piece of paper, come back in and look and kind of see where our patterns are. That might be a be a good discussion. I'd where like, would how far would you pattern your shotgun for duck hunting? It's a good question. I mean, like, seriously, that's another thing. How like, close can you if get? If I'm your calling them, I mean, <laughs> yeah. how good a caller are you? Well, David and David and I, I mean, we pretty much what ten feet. Yeah, pretty much where I pattern like mine, it. ten feet. You always hear what do like you shoot? <laughs> when I, when I pattern a shotgun for like duck hunting or loads like that, thirty to forty. I'll do thirty. Yeah. When I do turkey, I'll do forty, and then sometimes I'll have fun and just see. But standard thirty or forty, and forty yards on a duck is a long that's shot. A long shot. It's a long shot. And, and you so, don't realize how far out there that is when you're sitting into a timber yeah. hole or something. And that's the thing. Most people, like, they get this extra full choke, <laughs> shoot this big shell to shoot one duck a day 40 yards, and they're missing stuff up close because yeah. they're shooting right. The wadding's hitting the duck instead of the shot because right. you're barely in front of it that if you'd have had an open choke, you'd have killed. If David's going to be calling the show, I'm going to put a bayonet on the end of mine. They're going to be in tight. <laughs> but, to, yeah. I mean, honestly, you should, you, if you, whatever you shoot, you should shoot the same choke and try it at 20, 30, 40 and see what your difference is. And you'll be like, man, most of our well, That'd ducks, be a good discussion. We ought to do that and then, you know, show our papers and stuff. That would, I mean, that you'd do. be surprised the difference that that makes in velocity loss and pellets falling off and staying there or how tight they are at front. I've seen people at 20 yards, you know, still sh tight. She shoot a grapefruit through a hole. Yeah. Like, and you're like, if the duck's five, five, you know, inches to the right, you totally missed him and turned him straight up like you see him do. Yeah. That same duck at 30 yards, 10 yards further, you killed him. Yeah. And you let it the same, you shot it the same, no difference. So a lot of close misses, you know, you could say you got too tight a choke, too bad a, too bad a setup. Yeah. It'd be interesting. We ought to do that. I think that'd be fun. Let's, uh, next time, let's bring some shotguns up here, at least the next time or two we do this uh, podcast, and we'll go out there and be Y'all can shoot we'll my shoot sissy 28 back. gauge. Yeah. See, well, as of right now, I'll still be shooting 12. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you shoot my sissy 28. You both go buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you shoot my 12 first, see if it cuts your finger. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have, you'll have the pad. Yeah, I, yeah. I have a pad on my finger. <laughs> yeah, he'll be up here. Man, Brad's gun got, got me, got a stub, cut my finger off. Yeah, well, guys, it's been fun. Let's uh. Let's do it again soon. Don't be strangers. Uh, like I don't see David every single day. Every yeah. day. Uh, we'll, uh, Not that we don't <laughs> – sometimes we really don't talk because we're back and forth. But. Yeah, that, no doubt, no doubt. We'll um, we'll get going. It's getting about that time. It's getting about time to have a little party. We string up a few decoys and start getting some stuff ready. And yep. I'm ready to go. I know it's uh, – it's, you start making duck calls, it, it changes things a little bit because I'm looking at the season like, oh, man, i got to get this, this, and this done. Mm -hmm. so it's not, it's it sneaks not the up same. on you. Yeah, and it's not the same like, man, What's, I can't wait for duck season. I can't wait for duck season. Now I'm looking at it like, I'm not ready for duck season. It's we 100, gotta get, we it's gotta 100 get days stuff. to Christmas. It's, it's yeah. like we were talking about before we started. Both season opens yeah. up. Deer both season opens up this weekend. Open Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. We're here laughing about, oh, yeah, dove season, it was fun. You yeah. know, went teal hunting, didn't really see many or something, blah, blah, blah. 
I mean, literally, what's the opening day of duck season this year? Like the twenty first again, the twenty second. Like that. That's two months. Yeah, too much from the day. Like duck season's fixing Snapping to open. Fingers, man. So I have, you know, it's kind of a tradition with me. Like when the Razorbacks lose their first game, I get my decoys out and start. <laughs> <laughs> and that usually and that usually gives me plenty of yeah. time. You plenty know, of time. Plenty of time to be ready for uh, the season. So they they dropped one the other day. So it's it's uh, about time to start getting ready for hunting. That's why you love Pittman, though, in the press conference. Why are y'all worried about BYU? Yeah, we had a bad game. We're still undefeated in SEC. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I like this man. I like this man. The glass is still half full. Yeah, we haven't been skunked yet. Yeah. Next season, haven't we? <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be gonna be good. But, uh, but anyway, guys, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of good stuff coming out here. So hit that notification bell, too. And uh, we'll see you next time.